The way he said bye bye and then the PS5 exploded. <laughs> and then the counter went down to zero. And I saw somebody say, look, that's the number of games on the PS5. And then I was like, this is great. <laughs> it's also funny knowing that Double Fine made the alien guy and then people have been calling him Phil Spencer the entire week. It's just kind of funny. <laughs> this writes itself, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the HGO Podcast. I'm one of your hosts today, Ethan, and joining me, as always, are my good friends, Kyle. Hello. And Hunter, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing just so well. Moments like that that you uh, really appreciate that we swapped Hunter to the end right there, because, my God, you were having a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you were choking. Having a little fit. Yeah, until yeah, my, uh, the last My second. throat's been giving me some grief for the past couple of days. I don't know if I caught the wasting sickness again or if it's just recovering from the concert I was at earlier this week. You know what you caught, Hunter? Astro fever, baby. That's what you caught. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? You know, let me get on my little soapbox real quick. It's not often oh, that I'm right on this podcast, but when I'm right, <laughs> baby, oh boy, am I right. The heathens, they moaned, they were they thought I was crazy thinking that this would be the game of the century. <laughs> Yet look at where we've ended up, ladies and gentlemen. I was right. I'm great. Astro's here. He is risen. He is thriving, ladies and gentlemen. Astrobot's here. I mean, look, man. Game I wasn't doubting you necessarily. I was, wasn't, wasn't expecting what? 95 is where it was set at. Yeah. As no, good yeah. as Elden Ring. <laughs> If I remember correctly, I was like crying because Hunter got this on his fantasy draft, and you were like, "It can't be that bad." And I'm like, "Carl, you do not understand." <laughs> and here I'm we are. I'm like high eighty. High eighty is where it's gonna settle. <laughs> it did not, ladies like, and gentlemen. It did it's not. It's a first party PlayStation platformer. We haven't had one of these in a million years, and it's we not got that one. Nintendo. Shut uh, up, Hunter. No, we didn't. With Ratchet. <laughs> Oh yeah, we had well, we had Ratchet, we had Sackboy, I guess, but it's like, like in they this vein, up, I like. Here's the thing: they? is Ratchet has always been trying to be like, no, 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 we're not a platformer. We're not. Look at these, look at these guns. Look at all these guns. We're gonna be a action adventure game, basically, and we're just gonna do that. They try and limit the platforming, whereas this is just a root into in jump in platform, mate. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. It's here, and we're going to talk all about it, ladies and gentlemen. Is it overrated? Is it the best game ever made? Is it worth buying two copies and a controller for? Let's find out, ladies and will gentlemen. Will it cure your depression? <laughs> if this doesn't, I don't know what will, to be honest. Like, come on. All these Xbox fans, dude, just buy a PlayStation. Get on this Astro Bot. Your depression will be cured right real quick, dude. You don't need to listen to Phil. He's fine. Just get on that Astro Fever. <laughs> Fuck it. This You're not going to miss PC. anything because they're going to bring all the other games <laughs> over here. Play anyway. Indiana Jones yeah. in, in March like everybody else, guys. Come on over. Come, come dip your feet in the Astro Pool. It's good, dude. We're having <laughs> fun. Um, but yeah, uh, that's basically the topic of the show this week. Maybe we'll talk about something else. We've run out of time. But we're here to discuss Astro Bot, the first big game of the fall. It begins, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but yeah, if you're new here, I, what, what did you want me to say? Am I? Am I? I'm I, sorry. Am I, I? Am I belittling visions of mana? Am I belittling no, your no, beloved no. Concord? No, I thought you were going to say the first big game of the year. <laughs> <laughs> There's For a, a part second, of me. I thought that's what he was going to say. It. I would that's never. It. I would never say that to Concord. I just would never say that. You know. Um, <laughs> Is that uh, even a game that anymore? Can no. we count that as a game? No, it unreleased. Open Critic unreleased that shit. Anyway, this is HO Podcast. We're here every Monday around 5 p.m. UK time, 12 p.m. Eastern on podcast services everywhere on com forward slash hot gamers only. Uh, housekeeping for you. Uh, it's, 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 it's game time, everybody. It's game time. We have got games from now until uh, the end of November, basically, beginning of December. So um, if you haven't already, uh, subscribe, follow us on your favorite podcast feed, leave some support, leave a review, leave some comments, a like, that's all greatly appreciated. Uh, we've got a lot of work to be doing over the next few uh, months, whether it's just playing games, or whether it is reviewing them, whatever it is. Uh, I feel like we're going to be sick of writing about video games by the end of this year, but it's going to be fun. Uh, so if you can support us, that would be fantastic. I'm hoping to have the Astro review out 
this week as of the podcast going out that is my aim that is my hope um as of recording this on saturday night i'm about 60 percent of the way through the game so i'm hoping that uh it might be out by thursday or friday fingers crossed um and then we'll see how it goes as games continue to come out and me and hunter try and juggle six million games and decide if we can cover some of them we'll find out um, oh, it's amazing how much of a like I have circumstances for when things are getting cut, depending on whether I'm done with something or not. Basically, yeah, it's 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 getting busier by the week. It seems some other games just like, like if there's not a Silent Hill two review up by the time Life is Strange come out comes out, it's just not happening. Well, I was going to say. I'm likely reviewing Life is Strange anyway, so wish me luck in October. October's <laughs> going to be painful. I've got to get through a JRPG, an action, and that, like a narrative adventure game, and a couple of other things, so that's going to be painful. Uh, I can guarantee you this. Life is Strange review might come out before Metaphor, depending on how long Metaphor is. Let's find out. But, you know, we'll cover it all. We'll just, see how it goes. Just just play enough of Metaphor to get the general gist. Yeah, that's you true. You don't need to finish it. That's true. I, I will finish it. Maybe. Who I knows? Mean, Let's find out in a couple of weeks. Finish it. Um, maybe you won't even like it. Maybe Who I'll knows? hate it. Who knows? That'd be funny. I don't know. Let's find out. Um, but yeah, <laughs> uh, plenty of games, so keep it locked here at Hot Games Only, or on the website, <laughs> hotgamesonly.com, or on the podcast services. Just search for Hot Games Only. You can do whatever you like. Listen to us however you'd like. Uh, Let's get straight into it, though. I've got nothing else to say. Anyone else? Anyone else got something that they want to plug, shill, or whatever? No? Cool. No. Cool. Nah. Can't even think of anything funny. No, same. Uh, let's let's move on to Astrobot, then. Main topic of the show. Astrobot is here. Astro sweep. Um, the Astro sweep has landed. Uh, they called me a fraud. Look at me now. I am a prophet. 95 on open critic still sitting there with 87 reviews and 94 on metacritic um highest rated game of the year that's a thing here's the thing kyle right i i know i've been it feels oh, good to feel vindicated now. and it feels funny to be a very much a uh a hype man for this game for the past like four months since we've known it was coming out but even i didn't expect it to get this high like let's be real here i was not expecting this um i thought like 92 was going to be the ceiling <clears throat> yeah i didn't think it'd pass rebirth on the review scores like, like i thought it would sit at like a 91 90 that was my guess like the lower end of my estimation was like 88 around where ratchet got him and 92 if it was like especially good and it's went even further than that which you know, like yeah is great <laughs> yeah i mean to put this into perspective um this is not only the highest rated game of 2024 so far it is also one of sony's highest rated games ever of all yeah, time nice uh this game has reviewed higher than god of war and god of war ragnarok uh this game <laughs> has uh obviously it's it is uh reviewed higher than both horizon games uh it has reviewed Spider Man now, huh? It has reviewed higher than The Last of Us Part Two so far. It is <laughs> quite possibly Sony's highest rated game of all time. Um, <laughs> obviously, it's not had as many reviews. It could go down a little bit, but even still, <clears throat> ninety five on Open Credit is fucking mental. Um, and there's loads we can talk about here, right? It's like it's honestly, I think it's bittersweet that Concord goes down the same week this happens i really do think that this is just same, like the same day the same day exactly um i think there's a lot to discuss in terms of what's the future of sony holds where they should what they should learn from astro but we'll get into that a little bit later but let's get into people's opinions um hunter i'll start with you how much time have you put into astro bot so far where are you at um i don't know what the hour count is but i'm in the middle of the third world like uh i think I, I did two levels or i got to the end of the second level the bathhouse one mm -hmm. was not technically the second one you could pick a different one but that's mm -hmm. the one i did and then then the game crashed so uh, i had to crash no. in i had a crash in uh world two i have had a crash um Damn. luckily yeah. it's only been in Get i only had my crash was literally just on the 
menu screen like they're flying between worlds and i lost zero progress quite literally yeah sadly um, i got to like the end of the, almost the end of the level i even found the secret exit and i'm like well i'm gonna go grab the other things and come back and then <laughs> my game crashed and i was like ah see hunter this is this is why uh, reviews are rigged and two two of the three of us have encountered issues with the game i mean uh excuse me uh yeah. on except you guys both playing physical no i'm yeah. playing digital no, Ignore okay. the physical copy over there. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I've really liked it so far. Like it's been real good, and the way that all of the worlds have been a joy to explore. Um, the mechanics that they introduce for the levels don't outstay their welcome. I don't believe. In like, most of them have been pretty cool. Oh yeah, we'll get into all that in a little bit. Kyle, how much have you played? What's up? I have beaten the third world of the video game, and pretty much like Hunter, I've been enjoying my time with it a lot. This is, like, right from the get-go, this is such a fucking cute video game. It's, it's adorable. It's so yeah. silly, so goofy. I, I just, I'm just having a grand old time playing it. Like, so when I do my end of the game of the year 20 whatever wrap-up list, um, I take I write the games down as I go through. I think I finished the third level of this game, and I'm like, "Yeah, get on here, Astro. You earned it. Yeah, you're you're incredible." Uh, we're all roughly in the exact same place, so I feel like that's like a round of applause worthy <laughs> accomplishment. Because I'm also I've just finished the third world, so we're all basically within two or three levels uh, of Hell each yeah. other, which is fun. Um. And I, I was I, I was expecting to like this game. I was expecting to like this game quite a, a bit. Um, even still, I am still smiling and giggling and sometimes childishly screaming at uh, far more than I thought I would be. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it is about this game, but it just exudes charm and uh, an aura that has been missing from Sony for so fucking long, where... It just, it feel. here's the thing, right, is Astro's Playroom was just a celebration of PlayStation. It was a very cutesy, fun yeah. platformer that was just like, look at this, here's a PS3 Shock 3, do you like it? No, cool. You know, it was just like, <laughs> and this game has these moments, you have all these characters, you have all these Easter eggs, and there are so many in here. There are so many deep cuts in this game where I'm like... I have no clue who you are, and I know that yeah. somebody else is screaming right now. Like these are the kind of references when I was like, you know, I don't want to like spoil too much, but like Mister Mosquito, really, like you know, just like <laughs> stuff like that, where I'm like, you literally have referenced couple, everything here, you know. Where I've been like, you know, at a certain point, I was like, oh well, if... I thought they were gonna stop referencing, like. So I, I figured there was like a, you know, quota for the games in question mm -hmm. for some of these. And it, there doesn't seem to be, which is nice. Mm. No, there, there definitely isn't. Right. And it's just like they are taking references from everywhere, whether it's obscure PS1 games that you've never heard of, random, you know, stuff from the P like <clears throat> on any of Sony's consoles, but also recent indie games there have been a handful of recent indie games that i have also seen bots for and stuff like that which i was completely oh, yeah. not I expecting just got, i just got one that i was like wow that wasn't uh, i wasn't expecting that <laughs> not 100 percent. and it's just like every single level in this game and i've been streaming the whole thing really so uh go check out my VODs channel if you genuinely want to go and see my reaction to certain bots and stuff like that, is it's just been me screaming and giggling and just kind of, you know, having a blast looking at these characters. And yeah, you know, some of them are, you know, we're in Astro's Playroom originally, so you can expect to see them again, you know, like Crash, but they've added new gacha mechanics where you get items for the characters so they have new animations. And I was just like, I was just exploring the world and I was like, what happens if I press the dance button on my D-pad next to Crash, who is also dancing, and Astro joins in with the Crash dance, and he starts doing it as well. And I'm like, <laughs> it's just little stuff like this where I'm like, it's so fucking well polished, where it's like, it, this is the closest anyone has ever gotten to a Nintendo platformer in terms of polish and in terms of style. Like, I genuinely believe that. As someone who's a fan yeah. of so many 3D platformers, like Crash, 
and uh, Spyro and all these other. I've never seen something this polished. Like I genuinely have not mm-hmm. felt something that fe- like played a game that feels this good. I genuinely haven't in terms of a platformer. Then maybe other than Mario, um, made and it's so simple excellent. to play. Also, like mm-hmm. you've got jump and you've got spin attack. Like <laughs> it's it's brain dead. And it's then you've got, easy. And then you've got the context special powers or whatever on the yeah. R two. Yeah, yeah, and like you said, Hunter, right? Is you've got all these kind of powers and they really do not overstay that when when we say they do not overstay their welcome what i mean is is the ability in the first level i've played through the whole of the first three worlds as far as i recall i don't think that power-ups come back since the first level i don't think i have done that yet again i've only got a repeat like two twice Mm -hmm. maybe three times so far but you know and it's just like it feels and i think that's why it's caught everybody off guard to be honest i'm like when people are like is this game overrated blah 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 i think it's a right game at the right time situation where a really solid platformer has come out and nobody has released a really solid platformer in a long fucking time even nintendo's been a bit soft on those recently there was mario wonder last year but i don't think that scratches the same itch right mm-hmm. it's like nintendo odyssey was 2017 we have not had a 3d mario in that long it feels like a long time um but it just it has those nintendo isms where they just t- it feels like gameplay came first it really does where they were like what's a cool idea let's iterate on it let's polish it we could make an entire game out of this one stupid gimmick let's throw it away after 20 seconds like it's just recycled <laughs> like it just it like i just it baffles me that this was made by a team of 65 people like when i look mm-hmm. at it and i'm like they a, a group of 65 people made this game in less than 3 years and I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with the games industry? Why can why are we at this point where this is like I'm looking at this and going, this is a miracle? And I'm like, this should just be what happens. Like this is crazy. Well, um, also consider context of this week. Concord was in dev hell for eight years and it lived for two weeks. Mm-hmm. At least four years of constant dev and then four years of pre-production. Yeah. In some way, shape, or form, which is baffling, right? Um it's just I, I'm I'm play. I like to say I've been playing this game, and I'm like, man, it's just so fucking solid. Like it just it really is. Like if you have a kid and you have a PlayStation Five, this is the game to pick up now. This is your Mario Odyssey. This is your Go Get Them. This is the game to play. And Sony hasn't had one of those in fucking generations. Like I don't think they've had one since like the ps2 if i'm being honest because like ps3 they've had like you've had your ratchet and clanks that have carried on over time but i feel like ratchet and clanks are more made for <laughs> adults than they have ever been where it's just like you liked ratchet and clank keep playing because I, I genuinely don't know an eight-year-old who was like yeah ratchet and clank that's sick like i just don't yeah. right <clears throat> whereas this genuinely does feel like it's just going for fun first and it's just going for that family audience and i think they've nailed it mm-hmm. um i don't know where the line is of what we can spoil and what we can't because i feel like i don't want to ruin is that does anyone have anything non-spoilery they wanted to talk about first that's my thing because there's 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 an extra added thing to this game i mean we can talk about bosses we can talk about like all of that jazz the bosses are sick there's some really good bosses in this video game yeah i like that they're just like cool set pieces Mm -hmm. like you know, Nintendo bosses always feel like they have to present the illusion of being an actual obstacle, and they never are because it's just dodge and jump on it three times. I don't know if this is a controversial <laughs> Whereas, opinion. I feel like Nintendo could learn from the boss fights in this video game. I really think I that agree. Mario needs to learn like, from these these boss fights. The, the boss fights in this aren't very, you know, much aren't much more difficult than that either. But there's a bunch of style to what you're doing. Like, mm-hmm. everything just looks really cool while you're doing the typical, like, you know, throw the rocks at the weak point and then climb up the guy's leg or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's It manages to, again, the, the controls are so precise and so well, you know, crafted that the the boss fights, they, they don't need to explain anything to you. They, they just work and it's great. But they have this 
Mario games suck when it comes to boss fights because it's just your Bowser boss fights and then whatever minion that they decide to come up with for the thing where you just bounce on the head three times and fuck right off, right? Really simplistic but boring game design. These boss fights are very basic in in like principle of what you have to do, but they mix it with such spectacle and, you know... The first boss is very run of the mill, but boss fights two and three, boss fight two especially, uh, this octopus in the ocean, right? <laughs> oh, um, yeah. There's a whole third phase that then just becomes a whole platforming challenge in the middle of yeah. it, and it's like it's like a Moses parting of the sea moment where it's like it was all under the water the whole time, and you're just like, what the fuck? Like this is so sick. <laughs> like I love it, and there's a there's a very similar moment near the end of the third boss fight as well, where the whole third phase is something entirely different, and it's just like. It's so damn solid where I'm like, this is so much fun. Again, I'm just constantly smiling at like mm. just at the level design and the way that they're doing it. Where even with the even with the mini bosses that appear at some of the end of the stages, like even those you have to like take stock, be like, okay, what's <laughs> how do I approach this with the the power that the game gave me for this level? Yeah. What yeah. do they, what do they want me to do here? It's not like Mario, it's just dodge and jump. Yeah. And the nice thing is, like, usually it's really intuitive to whatever you're doing, too. Like, you don't mm -hmm. actually have to stop and think. You'll just kind of intrinsically know what to do based yeah. on the mechanic in question. And the levels are built in a way where it is built for exploration of moveset, where it's like you're introduced to a move, it very clearly gives you an obstacle that's very easy to navigate and work around. But as the level builds up, it adds new mechanics in a way where it's like, okay, you've got this dog that rocket thrusts you every time that you move it. And then it's like, okay, we'll just start with some basic platformer jumps and stuff like that. And then you can learn to, and then we'll teach you that if you wait for the opening, you can then ram somebody off of the fucking cliff into mm. Team Rocket their ass out of the fucking map. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah. there's fun stuff like that. And then it starts to turn into breaking glass and using it as a way to get through areas. And it's just like the way that they build it up throughout the level to the point where I'm never questioning something. I'm never going, okay, what the fuck am I doing here? Like it's, I'm, it's constantly moving forward and it's not having to tell you shit about that. It's just letting you figure it out for yourself. It's really well done. Yeah. There's yeah. another power up where um you like absorb this like nectar on the ground. Yeah, yeah. And if you, there's two different kinds. There's this green one that just makes a platform and then this like bouncy honey mm -hmm. that makes a bouncy platform for honey, you. Honey, yeah. So yeah. It's yeah. It's just really cool what this game's able to do. And then it and then again though, it's like, okay suck up the puzzles from suck up the puzzle pu the puddles rather to <laughs> create your blocks then later yeah. on when you've got the honey then it's like oh look there's these blocks of honey oh do i suck those up like i've been sucking yeah and that's how you clear the barricade and stuff like that it's just like little iterations <laughs> on the formula where you stop and think okay how the fuck do i do this oh that's how and then you just kind of move on and it's just like again it really is it's almost that full guy's mentality of three buttons, right? A jump, a punch, mm -hmm. and a uh, R2 grab special, like a, a special move, basically. Yeah. And that's it. You just need three buttons. I think it's really cute that on the controller, right, on your little spaceship controller, when you look at the actual controller in game, it's the the triangle and the circle button are actually grayed out even on the controller, as if to say <laughs> you're never going to use these buttons. And I just think that it's like it really is in that nintendo styling of just two buttons and a grab and that's all you need right there's there's not much in a way of accessibility either but there's like there's some good stuff like you, there's motion controls enabled like every time you enter the level you enter on your little uh playstation 5 rocket ship dual shock mm. uh dual sense rather as you swing in and the accessibility settings you can turn that off if you want to you can just left and right it if you feel like it but one thing that i really like is They've got the they've got the Splatoon camera reset where you just press a button and it resets the camera forward and I'm like, that's really nice because it puts it on circle. Circle's not being used for fucking anything else and it's just like you know a, a nice little quick snap. It's just like stuff like that. I'm like, well, they thought of everything. I'm like, this is crazy. They really have thought of Dude, everything. I also, I also love on those little fly-ins where sometimes there'll be collectibles you can grab on the on the fly-in like puzzle pieces and shit like that. Interacting with the world, you hit an enemy and it frees up a puzzle piece or stuff like that yeah it's really yeah. cool 
you can't just they're not just a load screen you can't just keep uh you just can't ignore them you're like oh god but what if there's a puzzle piece here um and the secret exits as well just like in you know in a mario and a 3d platformer and some of these are fucking tricky to find like some of these have been actual head scratches i've been sitting there for 20 minutes in levels going what the hell how do i get this I haven't been trying to 100% the game yet. I've just been going mm. through, getting what I get, and I've found one secret exit, yeah. and it was in World 3. They're yeah. really good about when, because, like, a couple of times I've had to go back to find them. The, uh, they've got the little bird sonar thing to mm -hmm. beep at you when you've missed stuff. I think they're really good about that. And even then, like, uh, before, it was just kind of... I had the right idea the first time going through, and I just didn't, you know, stick it, stick with it enough to figure it out. Like uh, There have the, been... Uh, uh, in the exact same way. There's been two <laughs> for me where I have looked at the fucking thing. I have been on the thing. I There was one I did today, and Sam was in the chat, <clears> and he <throat> laughed at me because I went, I found it, I looked at the thing and went... Damn, I'm disappointed. There's no secret or anything here, you know? This bad game design, I'm all right, guys. Like joking, going, there's nothing here. And I walked off. And then when I had to replay the level to find the secret eggs, I'm like, it's there, isn't it? And it was. And I was just dumb. And I'm like, oh my God, this is, you know, excellent. The one that, like, uh, the snow level, the first mm -hmm. snow level, I, like, looked at the thing that, you know, leads you to it. Dude, I spent two minutes punching like it. <laughs> yeah, I spent a minute just punching that, and then I'm like, okay, well, nothing's happening. I'll come back later, and I just forgot to go back before I <laughs> tripped the goal. Yeah, like, you know, because I was sitting there going, okay, there's no other way to get past this ice. This level has not taught me any other way. As he sits there, carries on, and progresses through the level, and so long gay bowser's the pig into the fucking ice to <laughs> throw it away, right? And it's like... Yeah. um it's just little stuff like that where i'm like some of these are really well hidden like very well hidden um but it also doesn't feel like something like crash 4 no they're completely well fair where it's not total bullshit we hid this off camera no kind of thing. half of them are my fault there was one where yeah. there's one in world 2 where it shows you like crash 4 there's a map on the side of the rock and it's got like an x marks the spot and I was spending 20 minutes looking around this rock going, I can't find it, I can't find it. The real reason was, is because I didn't progress further, because I was like, that's the ending, I'm not going to go to the ending. There was actually a boss that would surprise me after I went to the ending platform and had to fight it. And that's what would show me where the secret is. But I was just like, I just spent 20 minutes begrudgingly going, I can't find this for the life of me. You know, it's just stuff like that, where they're really well designed and they're really fun. And the secret levels are really fun too. Because they are, like, there's so many secret levels. There is literally there's the secret world. There are a lot. There's, there's the secret world where you know you're in the secret world because you can just hear the Astro Bot singing secret in the background like a little secret. cult. Yeah. yeah. Um, and those levels the are secret sick. They're really are, fun. Yeah, the levels have been a lot of fun. I think that's where my favorite uh, bots to find have been. Yeah, I found you. I found yeah. you with your little red coat. And I was like, oh, here's Hunter. Look at him. <laughs> My favorite part is like that could be at least I know who you're referring to, but there could be like three of them. Well, there is. Uh, we'll talk a little later about some of our favorite cameos. We'll do. Obviously, we won't spoil them here. We'll tell you when the spoilers because there's there's a couple of things I do want to talk about. We're not going to spoil anything major. There's there's because there's 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 some very special levels in this game, and one of them I believe has been shown pre-release. So I feel like it's fair to use that as an example. I don't want to ruin the first world's one, especially. Because the first world's one, I genuinely was screaming like a kid when I saw that. I was like, "Oh my god, it's fantastic!" Um, we're gonna like. There's a part of me that's like, in like a week or two, we're gonna have to dedicate the end of the show to just a mini Astro spoiler cast, so we can talk about some of this stuff. Because <laughs> oh, I will dude. want to talk about some of this stuff. Um, Astro yeah. Bot cameo tier list. Yeah, basically, oh, right? We one. could do that in the filler January. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. Pocket that away. Pocket that away. Do that for one of our pre-recording holiday season episodes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds like fun. Um, but then interacting with the world, you've got these little mini challenge levels that show up. You hit asteroids oh, and stuff like those that. Those challenge levels are great. I like those a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um. There, there's like four little hit secret like uh hidden areas and some of the areas that are all based off of the playstation shapes right so there's like a triangle yeah. galaxy and a circle mm -hmm. galaxy and all that jazz and they just the again the little mini challenge maps they're really 
they're not they're they're tough but fair. They they feel like they're like a secret level from the from like the secret world of a Mario game, really, where they're like yeah. short and sweet. They probably yeah, take yeah, like ninety like, seconds to complete, but they can be very precise they, on what they, they want. They have a learning you. curve. Yeah. Because yeah. there's also no checkpoints in them either. So you gotta no. do it all in one go. Uh, and you've just got a little one of your little bots just hanging, being kidnapped. So there's you just gotta chase them down, <laughs> um, which is really cute. I love them. They they're great. I really do like those challenge levels quite a bit. It's just and then you got the hub world, which is like Astrobot Pikmin. Um, yeah. you basically, all the bots you collect out of all three hundred, three hundred and four, however many there are. I think it's 300. There's just 304 for me because I got the extra bots in Astro's playroom. I think that's how that works. Um, mm. But you bring them all back to your home base where the, your, your PS5 spaceship is broken and you're trying to repair it. Um, and your hub, you can interact with all your characters. That's where the gacha machine is and stuff like that. But there's also like these... It's almost like a exploration hub, right, from Mario Odyssey. It very much reminds me of like a Mario Odyssey world where it's like there's sections to it and you've got to get enough astros to help you with all these things and it's just it's so funny seeing like you know oh i need to build a ladder and you just see it's built up of like solid snake and crash bandicoot and they're holding hands yeah, with ratchet as the they're building this platform and you just like well. like on top of this being like the closest thing that playstation's ever done to like a nintendo platformer it also i believe works as a better super smash brothers type of emotional experience than playstation mm-hmm. all-stars did Dude, there's something I think what they've nailed is this game is fantastic because it has these references, but in the way that Astro's Playroom I felt relied on that, like it was like a very much a nostalgia look at the Astro but doesn't like they enhance the experience totally. Would I want this would I want Astro Bot without them? No, because I think it's really charming in the way that they manage to do with playstation and Estelle. they managed to do something that very few companies do i think nintendo is one of the only people that can do that where it is kind of make something based on nostalgia and not have it feel like a cash grab i feel like hollywood tries this 99 million times a year and it feels clinical and disgusting whereas this genuinely comes from a place of love and reverence where you are you know <laughs> at the end of the day you're going around trying to like your parts of your ps5 back <laughs> and it's just but like nah. on paper it sounds stupid but it's so well done that i can't complain and you know it's fun seeing all these cameos but the game's fantastic on its own right it doesn't literally sit there and go my favorite part all these references you get crash bandicoot or whatever it doesn't say this is crash bandicoot but he is from crash bandicoot this is what made this is who made him say hello it's just funny name little quip that if you understand the re- like if you have played the game or something like that you 100 percent understand the reference that they are trying to make if you don't know hey that's cool it's just this random little bot that like it doesn't go out of its way to scream this is from here this is from here it's just if you get it you get it if not hey look at this cute yeah. little guy maybe go look into vib ribbon if you've never <laughs> seen vib ribbon before <laughs> you know i do i do kind of wish that like in the hub world you know know how you got that little pocket station Mm -hmm. by your that it says in the pocket station yeah i kind of wish you could check that and be like when you go to look at the bots all the mascot reference bots and be like this is where this is what this is based on this is what it's from i kind of wished it had something like that kind of like how smash bros used to do with its trophies Mm. Yeah. yeah, I can see it. I, to me, I, got, I get charm out of it because I'm like, oh, it's not trying to force. It's not. It doesn't feel like a lesson because I'm like, I know that solid snake. I don't know who the fuck that is, yeah. but he looks cool. Got yeah. out of my way. But it's like, also just I'm a fun game to be of... like. I've just been talking with my chat and I'm like, okay, who the fuck's this? And then someone's just <laughs> like, yeah, that's this. I'm like, oh, that's cool mm-hmm. or whatever. But yeah, like when I'm going through like the God of War level or the Uncharted level, it's like, okay, I I didn't play these. I don't know who these who these bots are. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a fun experience, dude. It's a fun experience. Um, we'll dive into slight spoilers. I don't want to talk too much about it, like I say. But uh, (laughs) is there anything that you guys wanted to add? Music. Oh, let's music is fucking phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. (laughs) That tree level that got brought up earlier. Love that one. Dude, it's at like I was laughing like it was nobody's business when the tree started singing like climb into my mouth or something. I'm like, this is so <laughs> oh, yeah, funny. That was weird. As I that hadn't was got like, any uh... of the collectibles yet, and I was just walking around after feeding the plant, I'm like, 
is he telling me to climb in his mouth? Like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> and there's just a whole musical number about a singing tree. And it's like, this is so bizarre, but hilarious. It's like, you know. Did, did you get the trophy with the singing tree? What, for flooding his mouth while he was trying to sing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course I did. I was like, yeah. That was really funny. I saw that he was I just... sitting, yeah, talking. I was like, no, you're not. And then I just started flooding his mouth. I was like, oh, trophy. <laughs> Fun. Well, I was just holding down the button, and then I saw the trophy pop, and I'm like, what the hell did I just do to get that? <laughs> I didn't get that one. I got one for scoring a basket on the uh, um, first dog level. Yeah. Oh, I haven't done that. No, there you go. There's a trophy that I need to go back and get, because I've not been looking at the trophy Shit. list. I've just been playing it. <laughs> Me too, dude. I, I I sent Astrobot through the basket. Yeah, that's what I did. That's what I thought. I was like, oh, no trophy. <laughs> I, like, jumped through the basket. I was like, oh, no trophy. <laughs> You see that, what I've come to learn about. To do. Yeah. What I've come to learn about those is like, uh, like besides trophies, the coin output there. You'll get like one coin for just putting Astro through like a basketball hoop or a yeah, yeah, whatever else there is. If you mm. take the object it, that you know should be going through <laughs> there and manage to put it through there, you'll get like ten coins or something. And, and the amount of hidden of... coins in this game is just like, like they're everywhere. Yeah. Like I, I climb up on something and go, ha ha. Beat the le- like, beat the level. Didn't expect me to get here. Got a load of coins on top. I'm like, hell yeah, dude. That's that's the spirit. Like the secret coins in Odyssey, where she's like, oh yeah, cool. I like that. But yeah, the soundtrack's phenomenal. Like genuinely, um, Astro's Playroom already had a banger soundtrack, and Astrobot is continuing that tradition. Um, they've they've added like there's a lot of the the songs from Astro's Playroom are in the game as well. Like uh, straight away in like the second level, the ice cream level or whatever. I was like, oh. This is the Cooling Springs music. That's cool. They're reusing oh, it, yeah. but some are just flat out. Re- There's not that many songs from the original, so I feel like it's fair play. They have they're making way more than was in the yeah. original. But then some of them are yeah. spins on the music where it's like, oh, that's from Astro's Playroom, but it wasn't played in this key or it's slightly different. I'm like, that's fun. Um, I liked the song, or I liked the uh, version of the music in the uh, special level of World Two. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, fantastic. That we'll talk me. about that in a little bit, yeah. Um, but now, um, I mean, I think we all recommend it. I think that's pretty clear. Yeah, um, definitely, certainly. So hell yeah, uh, let's get no no brainer. If you have a PS Five, if you've been looking for a game to play this year that isn't Concord, it finally happened. Then there you go. You've got a game. It's pretty great. PS Five has game. And I would like to say, if you have got a PS5 and you are looking at, like, I'm, I'm interested in playing this game, please pick it up. Like, please pick it up. Like, if any get... And I've got an inkling that this game is going to do just fine. Uh, Looking at, in the UK at least, it is sold out nearly everywhere. It's really hard to get a copy of this at the moment. Um, Which is usually a good sign. Um, <laughs> uh, I know on the, on the Amazon, on amazon us it is currently like the best-selling game so for like at the moment on amazon us and stuff You'd like that to see it so i'm like fingers crossed uh we get like a positive tweet or something from sony in like the next week or so because they they tend to let you know if something's doing well um we'll find out but yeah I'm having a blast with this game. I already It's one of those games where I knew within the first like 45 minutes, I'm like, I know what score I'm going to give this game. I just need to play yeah. more to justify me giving it this score. Um, <laughs> I already know what the the end of the review is going to be at this stage. Yeah, I have not like, finished it. I know what it is. Six I just need of more of the why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's more of a, <laughs> let me at least tell you why. But um, yeah. Let's go into slight spoilers. The, one, the two things I was like, at least in the first three worlds, or we'll we'll go up to where Hunter has played. Favorite little cameos. We'll talk about that. But one thing I did want to talk about, and Kyle alluded to it earlier, um, but we'll mention one of them at least, is there's at the end of each world. Spoilers, 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 spoilers. Get out if you don't want spoilers. That is a reference world. You basically find somebody and then you go to a world based off of a PlayStation IP for a little bit. You go and hang mm-hmm. out with a um uh, a PlayStation franchise for a little bit. And I don't want to ruin the World 1 one, 
because they did not give anything away for that one and i think that one's a fucking joy i genuinely sat around screaming the way that the animations are the exact same as the video game the music is the way everything works perfection really cute please go play it yeah you're like you'll have a blast i think the one that's fair games is because they fair game dollar sign is because they've uh, <laughs> already put it on the back of the box and it's been very prominent is the god of war level so i feel like it's fair to say that but like my god i was like as soon as as soon as the octopus was in the ocean and i knew that this is how the game worked and i was like oh it's gonna be kratos he's gonna be in his fucking boat in the with, with yeah yeah as soon as <laughs> like, the octopus went to the ocean i'm gonna be like oh there's gonna be a connection. world three i was literally sitting there because, going it's because there be were this, two be bots in the boss world too and i'm like all right so ocean there's it's a, a duo yeah yeah I was literally sitting there with the third world, and I was going, it could be this, it could be that, it was that, and then I got to the end, and I was like, fuck, it's that. I'm like, okay, oh, like, oh. <laughs> I was wrong. Um, but we'll we'll talk about the God of War one, because I feel like the God of War one is free reign. But, man, what, one, not only what a great level, like, it's a fantastic level, but the way that they mix the God of War music into Astro Dude, music so is <laughs> so good. It's a jam. It's an actual jam um uh, and i think the 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 surprise is obviously it'd be a surprise enough if you just got to hang out i was like at first i was like oh cool we're just gonna hang out in this world for a little bit we're gonna go to god of war but then you get to take the power basically of whoever you've gone into that world with and so you get to play as you don't play as kratos but you play as astrobot dressed as kratos uh with his <laughs> axe and it plays just like the fucking game like that was what i was like <laughs> The axe, yeah, like, I threw the axe. I was expecting the axe to act like a boomerang, you know, come straight back to me or whatever. But it genuinely plays like the game where if you throw it out, it will freeze an enemy and you have to press it back to drag it back in. I'm like, how much work did they have to do just for this one <laughs> level? Again, you've got all these abilities that they chuck away, but they literally had to probably study, like, God of War and how the axe works. And it's like, they got it to, like, it's just crazy. And it just works. And I'm like, all the references impressive. like all of the references which i just find hilarious like um there's the cave with uh the butt of war game being played and stuff like that oh yeah but to get through it they've put mud on the floor and it's a tight corridor to mimic yeah, the yeah. fucking load screen <laughs> the oh, load screen so movements good. and stuff like that um or you can get the world serpent to come out and you um if you blow the horn and I know that I didn't have to, but I was literally sitting there going, Wah! <laughs> like into the <laughs> <laughs> Um Just stuff like that, or was, you know, seeing Freya with the turtle and stuff like with a tortoise yeah, yeah, and stuff like, like that. Having to uh having to pick up the turtle to get one. I was like, I know mm -hmm. I know which one we're gonna get from this. Yeah, or seeing Fat Four and stuff like that, and just, you know, <laughs> chilling or Brock and Sindri and all that yeah. jazz. It's just like it was just a joy. And they're so good. The World 1 and 3 ones are also fantastic. Like, I genuinely, like, I was... World 1 genuinely made me smile. I was like, oh, this is really cute. Especially knowing uh, Asobi and knowing the history of that studio and who works there. I'm like, that's really cute. It was almost a, this one's for us kind of level. And then yeah. World 3 is a bit more of another bigger IP. Um, but it's really fun to go around with. And it's just like the animations and the way that Astro's moving and all those levels i'm just like man i wish people put this much effort into actual games sometimes i'm like this is crazy the amount of an unique animations and all that jazz for one level for when astro's cosplaying for five minutes is like yeah ridiculous i like that every power seems to have its own idle animation so yeah yeah like, like the, the i noticed the octopus in the hands. first level what's the monkey hands oh yeah. juggles he juggles uh, bananas. Yeah. Oh, that's sick. Uh, the octopus in the first level starts tickling Astro. If you leave it to like, you'll just start like going under his shoulders, and Astro will be like, kick. Like, oh, that's great. <laughs> knock it off, which I um adored. Um, and I genuinely have no clue what four and five are. I have an idea what four and five are off the box mm. art. I'm like, one of you's got to be one of them at some point. Um. But that leaves a fifth one that I have no clue about, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Unless they don't have one in the fifth world. They're just like, no, final boss and you're out. Who Bumsy. knows? 
Bubsy, you can dream, oh, right? Baby. Um. But yeah, they're pretty sick. Uh, let's round out this uh, Astro section with some of our favorite cameos. Uh, Hunter, you mentioned one earlier. Obviously, slight spoilers for a bot that's in the game. Spoiler alert, there's 150 of them. So if you have a favorite character from PlayStation history, there's a very high likelihood, unless they're owned by Disney, that they will show up in this game. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> I have not seen Sora yet. Could be proven wrong, but I highly doubt it. I think he's the one person that won't be here. But, you know. Yeah. Hunter, did you want to go first? Oh, yeah. So, you know, my favorite so far. Dante, obviously, mm. finding him was joyous. Um, earlier, or the first instance of finding Snake was great, and then additionally finding Psycho Mantis and Gray Fox. I wasn't <laughs> expecting either of them. To, well, once, I, once we got Psycho Mantis, I'm like, okay, there's a third one. I don't think it'll be Raiden, at least not. Because right it was Metal now. Gear 1 Snake, so I was like, oh, this is a Metal Gear yeah. 1. Like. It was MGS 1 in the snow. I'm like, oh, this is fun because mm -hmm. Shadow Moses is really cold yeah, yeah. and all of that. So Gray Fox was nice to see. Uh, Alucard, I liked finding him. He was great. Um, I know him. He's from Dead by Daylight. Yeah. I know him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then. He's from Smash Bros. Oh, yeah. yeah I, think true, the true. Yar I think the Yarnum Hunter was in the same level. Yeah, it was like it was all like, it was it was Richter, Alucard, and Hunter from Yarnham. <laughs> yeah, which is yeah. pretty sick. Um, I loved the 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 Spyro was pretty cool. I loved Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> um, I think this is early World Three spoilers. Um, but I knew this game was made for me when Sly Cooper and Joker from Persona Five were in the same <laughs> level. Yeah. Yep. Because I went to that level, and I, um, if you watch the VOD of me playing it, I was like, oh, it's the whims of fate, guys. Wouldn't it be fun if... I'm like, oh, Joker might be in this level. And I saw Sly Cooper. I was like, oh, shit. I'm like, Steve's, it could be. It could be. I'm like, no way would the fucking Joker and Sly be in the same level, and they were. And I was like, this game was made for me, bro. Like, this game was On literally the, uh, made for me. I had a funny instance of the order in which I did the little triangle challenge levels, mm -hmm. because I did the first one I got had leon at the end of it yeah yep. and the next two i did had uh it was teddy and i guess, I guess. yeah yeah uh -huh. so i think for some reason i just auto filled in the th last one was gonna be joker because that's what i did as well i was like and, and i was like and oh, i was fun. laughing i'm like why is it leon and the persona characters <laughs> <laughs> but no and it, it turned out to be claire i'm like oh that makes more sense dude <laughs> I was like, I wonder if Persona will be in this game. And then when the first one I saw was Teddy, I'm like, okay, Joker's definitely in. Then if they fucking put Teddy yeah, in, definitely. then yeah, the rest of them will be there. And then as soon as I got Igus, I'm like, yeah, definitely. There'll be a Joker somewhere. Um, <laughs> there's no way they're referencing Persona 3 and 4 and not 5. So I was like, yeah, okay. Um, but they're really cute. The Teddy one's really cute. Uh, if you get out of the yeah, gacha yeah. machine, you get a TV. And you, if you punch him, you'll get stuck in the TV. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't punch him yet, but that's great. Yeah. Which is fun. I haven't seen what Joker's is yet. Um, which will be fun. He gets a little. He gets a little calling card. No, does he? That's cute. Yeah. Um, like I say, crashes makes him do the crash dance. If you go and punch Spyro, he'll flame you. Um, <laughs> Kyle, do you 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 have, you have some favorites? I know at least of one. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's quite a quite a few fighting game references. They got Ken and Ryu. Mm -hmm. They have a cool little. I, I appreciate side by side the commitment to uh making Ryu's hair um like the reddish color it was in the first game. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize it was Ryu. I was I, t I took <laughs> until a I got Ken afterwards, and I was like, oh yeah, okay, it's Ryu and Ken. I was like, I'm gonna guess that's Ryu, but it looks nothing fucking like Ryu because I'm so used to yeah, modern Ryu. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was sitting there like this. Could that's be old school Ryu, Ryu, but maybe there's some other like I. I, th mm -hmm. I think I settled on it still being Ryu, but I'm like, maybe there's some other older fighting game where he looked the same or looked like him. Yeah, mm. yeah. But yeah, Ken and Ryu, they have some, they're right next to each other in the overworld. They got some cute animations with each other. Mm -hmm. Um, Soul Bad Guy from Guilty Gear is also here. <laughs> you punch him and he does his volcanic viper reversal move, which is really mm. cute. You can even hear him do like a little high pitched volcanic viper voice line. Nice. It's cute. But the one the one that really got to me, because I didn't have like all those fighting game ones, I had those spoiled for me. But one that I didn't have spoiled for me was um a Matarasu from Okami. Yeah. I 
I forget that Okami started as a PS2 exclusive when it first released. Yeah, you just think of Wii, don't you? Like, that's what you yeah, think of. That's, yeah, that's how I that's how I played it. So just seeing a Matarasu with like a tiny little Isun Astrobot, it's it was just really really cute. And like yeah. I, like I said, I didn't have that or yeah, I didn't have that spoiled for me. So it was nice to see. Yeah, I, I had very few of these spoiled for me. I've gone out of my way to not have any of them spoiled. Um, so it's just been very nice to just go around and go, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I had seen a couple. Like, I had seen Dante and uh, the Bloodborne Hunter. Mm -hmm. like, well, I knew the Bloodborne Hunter was going to be in there. Yeah, like, that's one of the through things the I'm promotional like, yeah. material. Yeah, well, you could also... Like, I'd seen the Sly Bot already because they released a promotional artwork of him. Or Cat. I haven't seen yeah. Cat from Gravity Rush yet, but I have seen promotional artwork because they, they revealed that on the announcement of Astrobot, right? They had that... Hit. I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah. There's just stuff I already know that's here that I have not seen yet. Um, but there's yeah. also stuff that I thought I'd seen by now. But I have not seen it. Like, for example, I have not seen a Cloud Strife yet, which I'd expect to see because there was yeah. the reference in Playroom. So I'm like, I'm still waiting for you. I've seen fucking multiple snakes at this point, but not. Um... Yeah. <laughs> These motherfucking snakes in this motherfucking <laughs> game. <laughs> well, I noticed all the, the Metal Gear characters were hanging out by themselves in this open area with Spyro just chilling in the background. I'm like, there can't only be three of you. There's no one else here. I'm yeah. like, there's got to be more of you guys. Like, I suspect Raiden will probably show up. Um, mm. uh, big boss, maybe. I don't know. But, um... um it'd be funny just... if they got, like, a look. It'd be funny if there was, like, a tiny Metal Gear Astro. <laughs> yeah. Metal Gear Ray or something. That'd be cool. I mean, there's still some I'm <laughs> expecting that I haven't seen yet. Like, from first party. Like, I'm sure there'll be a Sam Porter Bridges uh, yeah, somewhere. Yeah. I'm sure... I'd like to think there's a sack boy somewhere, like a little sack bot. Like that would be what I'm, I'm assuming there'll be one of those somewhere. Um, Just like a fuzzy, a fuzzy Astro bot. I'm expecting yeah. like an Astro, That's like I'm actually really expecting a sack see. boy, but with Astro's like screen face is what Eyes. I'm expecting. Yeah. yeah. Um, but now there's there's plenty to be seen. There's plenty of little, and there's so many references. Like I like Intelligent Cube, the Intelligent Cube guy. <laughs> it's so funny. It's just a. A, a, a black astrobot with a game of IQ on his fucking head is yeah. so <laughs> funny to me. Where you can see the little guy running, and if you he's doing the animation, and if you punch him, the the guy falls off, and the little astro catches him and throws him back into the game and stuff like that. I'm like, there's some really cute stuff. Yeah, um, I like the all the accessories that change the animations too are a lot of fun. Just yeah. To, yeah. Like, I didn't think I'd be super motivated to go and do the little, you know, lever pull and whatever. But I'm nah, like, it's oh, like no, crack. It always was and always I'm will like, be. No, this is, an, this is enhancing Gacha the Gacha will always win, Hunter. For sure. And this one's this free, time. and that's why it's game of the century. Because unlike some <laughs> yeah, games, this one's free. free. Let's it's go free gambling. The, um, the market doesn't inflate the more you do it. You don't. Thank need, God, because like, there's like 190 coins, things to get in yeah. that fucking Gacha machine. Yeah. Every slight, like, it's like almost every PlayStation character has an accessory, and then there's the sp the spaceship parts on top of that, and also yeah. like other stuff. It's like my god, the colors, the yeah. colors, yeah, yeah. And the alt the costumes. costumes, yeah, yeah. That's something I like, just like a small little complaint. I kind of wish that the Astrobots you get could be like equipped I, as I costumes. I thought that's what the costumes were gonna be. Yeah, yeah. But... There's only because there is like a ratchet. There is yeah. a ratchet costume. Yeah, yeah. But then I I got more costumes, and one of them was like, "Oh, here's a red panda costume," and I'm like, "Cool, mm. my favorite PlayStation character." I I assume that they're either a gonna add more as you go, like because they they've they, they'll probably want to add time trial modes and stuff like that to this game. I think there'll mm -hmm. be a couple of updates. Um, yeah. But also, I feel like I understand why they. It, like it'd be fun if they were like yeah you can play as all 150 costumes but i also think that i like the idea that in this universe that they have created that there is like solid snake astrobot is solid snake astrobot that's not an astrobot in a costume that is solid snake astrobot and it's like <laughs> your astrobot can pretend to be solid snake astrobot if he wants to on the weekends but he's not solid snake astrobot <laughs> like it's just like the ratchet costume isn't just the ratchet astrobot it's like yeah Obviously, him with fake yeah, ears like, and stuff I've like that. The, uh, and... I've got the Sly Cooper costume. Aww. Oh, there's a Sly yeah, Cooper costume? But... That's sick. 
Hell yeah. I've not been wearing one, any costumes because I've been recording one. footage for the review and I don't want to spoil that, so I've just been using regular yeah. Astro. One minor <laughs> nitpick I have is I wish that the equipping the powers didn't overwrite the costumes. Oh, does it? No, it yeah. does. So <laughs> that kind of that's stinky. You don't see it that much because of that. Because you're all big levels usually, you're spending with the egg. Yeah, you usually got like the power of the. I mean, for some of it, it makes sense. Like Sponge Astro, but it doesn't make sense to make <laughs> like, however many more. Sponge yeah, I can Astro under bot. I can understand that one, but some of them where it's just like you know you put the thing on your the back monkey backpack and... or whatever. Yeah, yeah. at least keep mm. Sly's hat or something. Yeah, yeah. But now, fair enough. I'm having a blast with this game. I genuinely am having a great time. Um, <laughs> this game's fantastic. It makes me want more There's... platformers from Sony. It really does. Like, <clears throat> obviously, I think Team of is going to be perfectly fine. I think they'll make an Astro Bot yeah. two or whatever have you. Um, and they're just dandy. I think they're going to be great. But I guess to wrap this up, I did want to like. I feel like Sony needs to learn a lesson here. Will they learn that lesson though? Because I feel like that's the question that a lot of people have been asking is surely Sony is going to learn from a really successful, highly rated pl platform that only took three years to develop with 65 people. Do you think anything's going to, do you think change will ever happen for Sony? Do you think we're ever going to get out of the live service minds? Well, I mean, they've well, clearly given the Astro Bot series a try. You know, it started as a VR game for yeah, PS4 yeah. that four people bought. If it wasn't for Sam playing it, I never would have heard of it. Same. I knew it was, I then, knew of its existence. Yeah, but then PS5 came out, bundled with a free Astrobot, basically a tech demo. Mm -hmm. And now he's got the best <laughs> the best rated game on PS5, in Sony's arsenal. Point, yeah. yeah, in Sony's I nah. it, it it does it reminds me so much of old Sony, and I'm like mm -hmm. I really look at this game. And it's like, I feel like for a long time, here's the, my problem is, is Team Asobi is a small dev team. And this is obviously, I'd love for them to just work on Astro Bot. But you can, I don't know about you, Hunter, because I feel like you'd be the best person to judge this because you're, you know, more into the Sony ecosystem than, you know, both of me and Kyle really, is the feeling of Japan Studio is so in this game. Like, it feels Dude, like Japan yeah. Studio. All of the charm and personality that seemed to evaporate when they quit, you know, letting Japan Studio do their thing. And, you know, it, it seems to be captured here well and good. And, like, that's because Japan Studio is the ones who, even after, you know, the PS4 happened and PlayStation just decided, ah, we're going to make a bunch of third-person action games with cinematic <laughs> presentation now. Which I'd take, I'd take them over what the fuck this live service idea is. Yeah, me too. 100%. <laughs> because at least I like those, even if I could do with some more variety. I will play, I but... will play Ghost of Tsushima too. I will not play Fair Game Dollar Signs. I will uh, make my stance but, clear on that. Um, but even, you know, after they decided that was just going to be the direction that every studio goes in, Japan Studio was still out there being weird for the duration of their life until yeah. Sony decided that they didn't need that anymore. Yeah. But it do, it just, it feels like a Japan Studios game. It really does. Like, in a way, there's a part of me that smiles kind of knowing that there is a bit of Japan Studio that lives on, where it's like, it's not going to be the, what it was, but the fact that we do have a little bit of it, that the heart kind of still lives on. I'm like, it's nice. It's a nice feeling to go, oh, we still have that in Sony's arsenal. And from all the interviews that have been coming up about Sobi, these are the games that they want to make. This isn't a, you know, a situation like an Insomniac where, you know, we make fun platformers for two seconds and then now we're going to go and make... <laughs> no, nah, now we got to go do Marvel. <laughs> yeah. I guess we're doing superheroes now. You know, this seems to be like, this is what a Sobi's objective is. We just want to make fun family games. Like the the creative director of the studio was literally saying we want to fill that hole in the portfolio where it feels like they were literally like we feel like playstation studios have tried to grow with our audience and we want to go and fill that old hole that is basically no longer there and i'm like that's perfect see, yeah and like growing with the audience is great and all of that but also you know new audience members need a starting point yeah 
I mean, in my perfect world, we look at these huge studios like Naughty Dog and Insomniac. And I mean, Insomniac kind of do do this when they decide to make an, a Ratchet and Clank game every decade, right? So we will get another one of these smaller team games from Insomniac, hopefully before 2030. Also, hopefully Insomniac, maybe this next time, make it $50 or $60. Don't make it 70 so that more people buy it. But, you know, that's just me. Um, I think they nailed the, the, the sale, the, the price of this game, by the way. I feel like at $70, I feel like people would have bitched so much. But high review score, $10 cheaper than usual. I feel like everyone's mm-hmm. liking that. Um, but like, just to go to Naughty Dog, hey, do you want to take 60 of your team and just spend three years making a smaller game? Not a platform or anything like that. Just, do you want to spend three years, just, 60 devs making a smaller game? Give yeah. us uncarded. Give us anything, you know? Just like, I feel anything. like, <laughs> just I'm hoping Media okay Molecule is filling this want... void as well. I hope Media Molecule is working on something creative and small and fun. Um. Mm-hmm maybe a full like an actual game this time and not a massive creation behemoth that was dreams that just managed to not fit into any <laughs> kind of flow anywhere but um i just wish there were smaller teams in my favorite art, i don't want asobi to expand but i would love a second japan studio like bring them back <laughs> i'd love i'd yeah. love for herman holst to go we fucked up we're bringing back Japan Studio. <laughs> like, that would be my yeah. takeaway. If we could do that, one that thing from this, bring fantastic. back Japan Studio. Yeah. But we like, fucked up. Or just the overall lesson of it's okay if not everything, you know, is the bal- over ballooned budget that people have come to expect now. Yeah. I like just Sony has so much IP. They have so much IP. Despite yeah. what the CEO wants to tell you. <laughs> How did he say that with a straight face uh, this week <laughs> when this fucking game came out? And literally every other tweet is someone fucking losing their mind over, you know, Sly Cooper bot or Jack and Daxter bot yeah. or whatever, you know? And it's like, no, you just sit dumb. And I saw a great chart where it was like, look at all these, look at all these platformers and all of their remakes and remasters and all that jazz. And literally it's just like Jack and Daxter empty. It's like Cooper empty, like all the PlayStation owned ones, Ape Escape empty. And then you're like, fucking Gax is getting a HD remaster. Every fucker's <laughs> getting them. Like Croc is. Tomba came like, back. Tomba's coming back. And we can't get a fucking platformer from Sony that isn't this fantastic piece of shit. Dude. Like, come on. <laughs> Why was it Medieval of all of the ones that they picked? To, or was Medieval not owned technically by Sony? No, that is a Sony remember. owned thing. I don't know. Okay, I couldn't remember. Why'd they pick that one instead of like one Fuck of the other ones that was a <laughs> slam dunk? Yeah. Bro, I think I found a for, uh, uh, Fortescue bot, right, from Medieval. And I couldn't tell. I was like, that looks like a skeleton. Is that just, is that supposed to be the Medieval guy? Or is this just Concord representation, dude? Is this he the skeleton? Like, a... like, what the fuck's <laughs> happening? <laughs> he'd, have, he'd have like a little armor suit or something, I think. Uh, I think he did. He did. He had like night yeah. armor that looked like it, but I was like, mm. oh, is this a. I'd already been failed once. I got a skeleton, like, guy with a beard. I'm like, is this from Medieval? He's like, no, this is from Ghouls and Ghosts. Or something. Like, okay, whatever. Is this from Medieval? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that one is. I'm like, okay, cool. I don't believe you. <laughs> um, Are you Squidward? Yeah. Basically. Um, but no. Astrobot is great. Astrobot is yeah. fantastic. Astrobot is life. Uh, it is cinema. Go it is it. peak. Go buy it. I bought two copies. I've done my part. Have you, Astro Nation? <laughs> Have you? I, I'm doing my part. Oh fuck! This copy's sealed, <laughs> bitch. This copy's sealed. Like this is just my. This is my. I did the thing. I'm also trying to not look at that. There we go. No, no, face the camera, Astro. You deserve it. You and your spaceship. I can't believe they made the spaceship in real life. That's crazy. I know. It's it's incredible. It's my backup, how this backup, one game backup got control. A whole, this one game got a whole companion console to go with it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cr- to be honest, there is no bigger smiling feeling that I had it's seeing like, this like PS5 the PS5 spaceship the Wii at the U. Start, yeah. Dude, I genuinely cried. Like I was like I was giggling like a kid when I saw the the PS5 spaceship do the Star Wars intro crawl yeah. over the fucking horizon yeah. and then you just see all of the Astros partying in the fucking spaceship and I'm like this is the greatest <laughs> game of all time dude like oh my god it's peak it's, it's so, so good. good 
Like my major nitpick with this game is maybe more than one hit would have been nice. Just like a, yeah. a two hit or out. Cause sometimes you just get randomly <laughs> sniped. That's one nitpick. And two, some of the enemy designs are still a little bit generic. Um, uh, yeah, I could, I could leave that be if, but uh, it's fine. If there was one like cool bad guy nemesis type thing instead of just the green alien from Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> then i uh, found out that green alien was not only in like the first astro kind of tech like um testing stuff like in the playroom vr stuff so it's a reference to that which i thought was fair but also i saw I mean, on twitter cool, today but... it was a collaboration with double fine double fine were working with them so they, they sent a tweet oh, out today shit. saying congratulations oh. to team Sobi. it looks like our little alien guy <laughs> made it in somehow so yeah apparently that is um <laughs> That is cool. Funny little goopy I'd alien. Like, I'd like, yeah, like I, I agree. I'd like a better two, bad guy than just random yeah, alien in, McGee. Two, I want the Dr. Cortex or the, you know. Bowser, the Dr. Bowser. Eggman, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, want I the, agree. I want the yeah. guy. But I kind of do like, there was a part of me where I'm like, this is like Nasty Nork, right? And this is like the Nasty Nork of this world, and then we'll get the Ripto in the second game, right? We'll get the actual yeah, villain yeah. in the second game. That's what I'm willing well, to do. Well, there was a funny end. part where... He just rolled up, beat the shit out of the PS5, and then just went bye bye, and then fucked off. I was like, that's kind of funny, to be honest. The way he said bye bye, and then the PS5 exploded, <laughs> and then the counter went down to zero, and then I saw somebody say, look, that's the number of games on the PS5, and then I was like, this is great. This shit writes itself. It's I also like funny knowing that Double Fine made the alien guy, and then people have been calling him Phil Spencer the entire week. It's just kind of funny. <laughs> this shit writes itself, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like this is <laughs> the uh, and people like, like this game can't be game of the year, dude. This is game of the decade, dude. This shit's like yeah. more lore than fucking Concord, dude. This is great. The line between parody and real life is very, very thin. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Anyway. I think, I think if I had any complaints, I'd think I want to see the game get a little harder because I mean, it's just no, I can very, see that. Some, of the, some, of, the, some of the challenging levels are tricky, but they haven't taken me longer than like five, ten minutes. Mainly. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. Maybe there'll be a super secret. I My hope is I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm hoping kind there's of a super secret final level. That's what my hope is. is. There's a super like, you know, super bonus world kind mm -hmm. of final level Mario shit where it's like, oh, yeah, like the world S from Mario Galaxy is yeah. what I was through. Galaxy 2 is what I'm kind of thinking of. You see, with, like, with all the secret the worlds challenges. being in a circle, there's I just have this envisioning of there just being one final world right in the middle of it. Once you've beaten everything would be my guess. Mm -hmm. That's where I that throws like a whole gauntlet of the abilities and stuff mm. at you or something mm. would be fun yeah, yeah well, that'd be cool that was a weird that was that was that was my liquid from my can guys what i was drinking that was <laughs> it made like a weird slurp sound so if that came in podcast feeds i did not just piss myself that was a can of soda <laughs> i'm also drinking from a straw because these cans that i have have blatant advertising for a movie that is in cinemas right now and i'm not giving them that fucking free promotion dude oh, it's got someone's seen. face plastered on it and i'm like that's weird. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not telling you what the I film is. Even, I, I can't guess. even think of anything like the, the Crow remake. Or no, it's not that. But it's not that. It's good. Probably Deadpool, if I had to take It's a not guess. Deadpool. Damn. I didn't. And your guesses are, are over. I'm out of I'm out of movies. I'm out of so. movies. Well, there we go. Yeah. There is only one movie. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 isn't it out isn't, yet until no. December. Yeah. I hope you I hope you guys enjoy it. Um I will. Did Thanks. it's it's one of those things where I look at the Sonic movie and everyone's losing their shit and I'm like, look at how cool Shadow and I'm like I wasn't there. I don't get it, dude. Like I'm like, <laughs> I'm so happy for you. You're having such a lovely time, but I don't see the vision. Like I haven't played Shadow? enough Sonic games. Did did you watch the other ones? No. Oh, the I only Sonic game I played is Sonic me, Heroes, okay. and when I saw Shadow, I was just like, "Oh, he's like every Edge Lord. He probably likes My Chemical Romance. That's all I know about Shadow." Is hey, listen, he My Chemical like... Romance is a great band. <laughs> hey, I like My Chemical Romance at times as well. I've got nothing against it, but it's like when everyone says, "Look at this cool ass." Leave Edgelord, Gerard like... way out of this. <laughs> when I see it, everyone's like, "Oh my god, he's so fucking cool," I'm like, "That is Keanu Reeves, and I am happy for him." <laughs> like that's what I see. It's just like, yeah. 
it looks like fun. I just still like laugh when I see Sonic and uh, Tails driving a fucking real life helicopter, and I'm like, that's goofy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take this seriously, but I do like Jim Carrey, so maybe I'll catch up. Uh, <laughs> let's wrap it up, Hunter. This is not Astrobot. You have blasphemed. You have played something else that isn't Astrobot this week. Uh, yeah. So I got sent a code over oh. the weekend for this game. I take it uh, back. This is a wonderful game. <laughs> <laughs> Shogun Showdown is what it's called. I got I got it sent to me by uh, a representative from Jesus Fabre Games, I believe is how you're okay. supposed to say that. Review copy uh, provided. Yeah, pretty much. Please I, do I not made sue. it clear to the person when they were asking me if I was interested that I might not be able to get a review out in a timely fashion, but I can at least talk about it here. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry. Um, there's a moth that is pretty big flying around my light. <laughs> um, but anyway. Excuses, excuses. Uh, um, let me pull up the description they were giving me at the beginning. Um, yeah, Shogun Showdown is a turn-based... And it's got turn-based combat. It's, you know, inspired aesthetically by feudal Japan kind of fantasy, fantasified thing. It's got a roguelike structure to it and the turn-based elements are intertwined with like a deck building card battle kind of thing um i think i didn't really have any expectations for when i downloaded it i'm like well i'll take it if they emailed me directly i didn't have to ask for really? this so i'm like okay yeah <laughs> oh, shit yeah on, per- was on like, personal or business emails is on the business one it was on like it was on like the hunter at yeah the best, the one that I yeah the one oh yeah. shit okay <laughs> yeah and I was like Damn. Wait, we did it, it Ethan it worked it worked yeah, I just, we had to we just had to yeah. hunter an actual outlet email that's crazy <laughs> I just because you know I I don't check that super often because most of the time it's just the other big companies sending me their stupid PR stuff where it's like oh check out. <laughs> Um, foam stars going free to play or something. I'm like, thank you, Square. Dude, that is, I'm not that is what half that. of mine are. Is it's that, and then sometimes Platonic is sending me messages like, "Do you want to check this out?" And I'm like, "Bro, you're sending this to the wrong person. I don't like Metroidvanias. Like, you'd, you'd rather <laughs> not hear anything from me. Like, let's be real." But, but yeah, so I saw that. I'm like, "Oh wait, you're not what I'm usually getting." So yeah, and I think that for the fact that I don't really. I've not really played very many deck based things as far as, especially this way. Like I played inscription last year, but that was literally like cards on the table and stuff. This is like cards function is like the abilities that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it got me to stay up later than I was expecting to the day I was trying this out. So I think it does a good enough job at tickling the itch of, getting you to try again i think that once you get a feel for how everything works you know there's a bit of a learning curve it took some getting used to as far as like uh everything costs like a turn almost Mm -hmm. um like you can load up three of your cards into a queue and like queuing all of them takes one turn a piece and then when you like you push like square to do all of them but you can do all of them as like one turn as well. Mm -hmm. And then like, so that's one for all three of them to be clear, not like one turn each time then as well. And then moving is also one turn each turning around. Um, So it was like, I was sitting there for a little bit going like, wow, this this is a lot of, uh, seems like very specifically everything I do seems to cost something mm-hmm. which took some getting used to because i don't know for some reason in my head turning around felt like something you should be able to do for free at first <laughs> <laughs> but you know i get it more now that i've played the game for a little bit as far as uh um it goes because you know you'll get the cards also come with their own cool you know a set number of cooldowns for each turn but and you know five could seem like a lot but then now, actually, if you just stick and move for a minute, you'll be all right. Like, but it'll cool down faster than you think it will because of how often you're <laughs> cycling through the things. And like, uh, as far as the way they structure the game, I think that part of the reason it's 
so enticing to keep trying again is because like every world so far i've i think i got to like the fourth area before i called it a night i don't know how many there are because <laughs> i think i played this like the day before it came out so i didn't have any like extra information to go off of um so i got to like the fourth area and like each zone is only like three different things and then a boss fight like three different rooms essentially and then a boss fight mm -hmm. um uh, the room encounters can be kind of long if you're not uh, ready for it. Like, there'll be, like, waves. It'll be, like, five waves of, you know, maybe two enemies, maybe four enemies, etc. They do a good job of mixing up the challenges you're dealing with, too, in the abilities at your disposal. As far as, like, the first thing I got was this... The, um, the default guy that you get starts with a move where it's like, oh, a sword move that does two damage and it'll hit on either side of him. And then his second move was like a bow that will go as far forward as it needs to until it hits somebody kind of thing. Uh, as far as like the balance and stuff goes, you uh, they're not very stingy about health items, which is nice once I started realizing that i'm like oh i'll just start using the health potions as i get them and that'll make my life a little easier because at first i was like completely ignoring the items you can carry three of those um it could be health potions could be like this curse thing that makes them take double the damage yeah etc but uh so it's not like super punishing as far as that goes really the only element of like that could really mess with you is the typical roguelike thing where it's like oh gotta get the hang of dealing with this specific kind of enemy and then you die so you gotta start over but again it doesn't take that long to go through everything so it's not that bad mm -hmm. i don't think and the boss fights aren't super crazy either like i had to fight the first one a couple of times because i was still getting my head around the game but after that it was pretty simple i beat the second guy on my first try I think I beat the third boss <clears throat> on my first go too, um, but yeah. And then like the they do a good job at when you lose a run or whatever. Uh, there's more abilities to unlock for, for, to like put into the pool of things that you could get while you're off doing the run in the dungeon. And uh, I only unlocked one other like character type where you like switch it over kind of like in vampire survivors or something where you switch it over and their moves mm -hmm. that they start with are different and they've got a different like special ability for you to do. But yeah, I could see myself going back to this. Um, I'd love to like finish it and make an actual review for it. If I can get the time. Oh yeah. I was just looking yeah. at their steam right now. Um, Hey, I'll put the steam up. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> see wow. give us a give us a review code and i will do whatever you want mate thank you very much <laughs> uh it's not even my code um but it's got like it's got really good reviews like very good reviews yeah, like overwhelmingly yeah. positive on steam and That's it's available like everywhere um, so um yeah i think the i think the game developer's name i, I had it pulled up over here earlier uh, uh goblins Robotine. with like a goblins Z. publishing robotino developer okay Robertino, and then it's published by Goblins Publishing. Yeah, all right. And look, there it is. It's available on Steam, Switch, PlayStation. It's even on the Xbox. Look, you've got a game, guys. Go play it. <laughs> it's crazy. Looks like fun, though. If you're into that, looks like fun. Yeah, check it out. Because, like, like I said, I didn't have any expectations for it. I, I'm like, this isn't usually my kind of thing as far as the cards and whatnot. But I'll give it a try. Sure. Hell yeah. Oh, it looks like fun. So, take note, indie devs. I will try your game <laughs> if you ask. You and indie, <laughs> send us a review copy. Uh, if you want someone we who loves indies, hunter at hotgamersonly.com. If you want somebody that likes easy platinums, Ethan at hotgamersonly.com. You know where to send them. Thank you very much. Um, you hear that, Radalika? <laughs> <laughs> no, do not. <laughs> I won't. I won't be. Uh, I'll be ignoring your emails. Um, uh. <laughs> I'm not that gullible. Uh, 
Um, hell yeah. But no, that's cool. That's it then. That's our show for this week. We're, I'm Astro'd out, except I'm not. I want to play more, but I can't. That's sad. Ethan's <laughs> like, I'm done talking about Astro, so I can go play more. I'm not going to go play Astro. I've got, I've got, unfortunately, I've got stuff to do tomorrow, so I have to go to bed at Ugh. a reasonable ish, ish time. Um, Life is so unfair. Yeah, that's why I've been streaming it at <laughs> night time, because that's the only time I've had a chance to play it. But then I'm also sitting there and I'm going, okay. So I've got like I've been doing like my weekly Life is Strange stream, so that needs to be done on Tuesday. And then also Life is uh, uh, Persona Three: The Answer is out next week. Uh, need to start also getting ready to play that. I'm like, oh, here we flipping go. It started. September's here. Like, oh dear. <laughs> and now uh, we got games coming out our eyeballs. Yeah, that's basically it. Is it's like you know we got that, and then I think I don't know if there's a week off then, and then it's um plucky squire or if it's plucky squire and then a week off i don't remember plucky but squire's out there's... on the 17th I yeah believe. so it is it's, so it's, yeah. it's so yeah so next week on hot games only we have got persona yeah, 3 with the answer what is the answer who knows maybe myself no. or kaya will find one um hunter won't because dlc's for nerds apparently but you know everyone else it will is. find the meaning of uh, whatever that's why the answer, the answer is. is no <laughs> <laughs> uh and then the week after that it's the plucky squire uh that'll be available everywhere but on playstation plus extra day one so you'll be having impressions from everybody because no one's mm -hmm. wallet needs to be opened on that day huzzah um can just Thank you for save my me money for plus. the physical version yeah hunter will still buy the game but hey devolve it you're listening hunter at hotgamersonly.com you'll play it <laughs> you'll play it um <laughs> Just get spammed Dude, now by random me. people just being like, I don't have any games I, to I, give you. Put your emails out there now. Yeah, it would be funny. Because, like, I suspect that they probably just saw my aggressive retweeting of stuff for, like, Hollow Body and Neon Blood. And be like, ah, oh, we got probably. it. <laughs> they, probably saw one of your, they probably saw one of your many indie reviews. Because you're, like, our go-to indie reviewer. Um, yeah. On the, on the, on the the channel right like in, i don't have i ever reviewed an indie game for this channel i feel like you've done uh, nearly all I of them i don't think so yeah i think the closest i've come to an indie game is a fucking life is strange game which isn't even remotely like that but it's like that's the smallest i go i guess um first of all kind of felt like it to be fair yeah kind of i mean yeah yeah it's all you bud it's all you but anyway <laughs> not about that next week we go back to persona 3 what will happen will we have fun will we cry we'll find out i guess um probably a little bit of both <laughs> no i don't want that uh but hey if you want to hear our impressions on persona 3 next week uh you can go and uh follow us on twitter at hot gamers only or subscribe to us on youtube at youtube.com forward slash hot gamers only and hey if you don't want to look at our stupid faces that's cool too you can go and find us on your favorite podcast service spotify apple Podcasts, you name it we're on it go and find us just search for hot gamers only and yeah you'll find us somewhere i'm sure um with that we're done that's it for our show this week uh, thank you ever so much for listening uh if we have listened this far and you have not been convinced to pick up our robot there's no saving you um <laughs> I think we haven't done our job properly. I'm done asking. Go buy the fucking game. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> or else. <laughs> or else. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, thank you ever so much for listening this week, guys. We'll be back same time, same place next week for more. But until then, have an awesome rest of your week. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. See ya. To the loop.